Hey guys, uh, welcome to another diagnostic video at Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Behind me is a 2000 Dodge Neon. It's got the 2.0 liter 16 valve 4 banger. And uh, we're at 127, 838 miles in the odometer. That's just here for a state inspection. And uh, when I pulled it in, I noticed the check engine light was on. Now, it's actually not on right now, but I did pull some codes. So we're in just uh, OBD2 generic mode. And I do like this mode because you do not get substituted values. And for this code, we got a P0118 engine coolant temperature sensor one circuit high okay so start with a quick visual inspection of the coolant temperature sensor while we look at our data let's see if it's a hard fault if it's happening right now so we immediately see our engine coolant temperature is at minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit now that means that there's an open circuit in the signal wire of the ECT so if you cut the wires off that's what you're gonna get so um, that means the circuit has infinite resistance and it's a thermistor so the higher the resistance the lower the temperature so, quick visual inspection of the ECT. You know, I didn't even look up where it was, just kind of hunted around for it. I look down here, you see that? I see bare wires there, and actually, they're just kind of hanging out. Two wire sensor right there, and those wires are just dangling they're not attached to anything so that sure looks like the culprit to me and this thing is kind of leaking oil on the side here kind of a mess that's probably the cam sensor so <laughs> oil does not do very good things to rubber or wiring insulation so if you think you have a oil leak that doesn't matter well down the road it might matter and then I try to figure out where these wires used to go to and uh, I pulled off a little piece of insulation and look what we have right here two wires sure enough this one looks like black with a blue tracer that's usually a ground on Chrysler's and then a brown and a black wire so just a quick and dirty let's ground out this brown and black and see if our data changes on our scan tool. Now I'm just going to touch on this metal bracket here and uh, look at our temperature. There you go, see 260. So that's short circuit, that's what it reads, 260 degrees Fahrenheit. So, confirmed diagnosis. All we have to do is we need to take that plug off, redo the connector, plug it back in, hopefully the sensor itself is fine and uh, send it down the road. That's just part one. Uh, stay tuned for part two. Alright, I got the wires cut and clean. That's the harness. Now the connector, I got it out. And you can see the pigtails are still in good shape. They just don't have any insulation on them. And uh, there's no reason to open this up and take those wires out. I'm just going to take some long pieces of shrink wrap, uh, put those on, solder these on, and slide them over so the whole wire will be sealed again. Maybe put some electrical tape around the whole harness bit. So uh, we'll fix this up, plug it in, and see if we have a good coolant temperature reading. Here's a shot of my wiring repair. So two thinner pieces of shrink wrap, then one thicker one with the uh, the shrink wrap ends so it's watertight all the way around and this heat shrink is uh, a little more expensive as that epoxy that comes out so that's really nice to seal it up and 
make sure no water gets in there. So let's plug it in and see what data we have. Final shot of our data. Engine coolant temperature is at 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is reasonable. Engine's cold, it's warm outside. Start up. Let's see this start to uh, increase. No check engine light. There we go. Starting to climb. Oh, well, it's in closed loop already. That's pretty quick. Fuel trims are decent. Alright, that's a fix.